those of you on Facebook, if you do not see the live button over in the corner, that means you've caught me on the replay. I'd like to welcome you in this morning. Great blessings be upon you. I pray that your heart is ready to receive from the Spirit of the Lord. Let's give me a little bit more light right here. I need that right there. All right, so we're going into John chapter 3 this morning, and I'm just going to, I was, um, as I was getting myself ready this morning, I I was actually listening to um, my morning meditation, which is something that I do. You know, I, I listen to um, to things myself, but I heard the Lord as he always would give me something. And I, all I heard was, was, for God so loved the world. So I'm going to go into John chapter 3 this morning to see what it is that the Lord wants me to extract out of this. I do know that on Sunday I had an intense um message and a great revelatory message that I shared over with Trim uh, about, you know, just learning to walk in balance with things and understanding the situation as it relates to the world. So um, I'm going to come out of this this morning, but let me pull some stuff out of it to see which way the Lord would have for us to go. John chapter three, and I want to get it. Let's pull from it at, um, let's go to Let's go to verse 13, John chapter 3 and start at verse 13 here. And it says, and no man has ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the son of man, which is in heaven. Now, he says, no man has ascended up to heaven, no earthly man, but he that came down from heaven. So he's letting us know right there automatically that everything that takes place, you know, everything that earth has, everything that earth needs is in heaven. It's in heaven. And it says even the son of man came from heaven. So that is to put us in a mindset of understanding that heaven must have some good stuff. You know, heaven cares enough about earth. Heaven cares enough about earth. I guess the place that I, you know, that I am in now is understanding that God so loved the world. It's understanding for real that God so loved the world. I don't think as believers we really get the concept of the fact that God so loved the world. Yeah, God does love, you know, his, he does love his children. He do love, you know, those that believe on him. He do love those that live for him, that walk according to the call and the purpose that he has for them. It do, it He does love us, but God so loved the world. God so loved the world. You know, that's the concept I'm going to push this morning because that's what I heard in my spirit. God so loved the world. And I believe that if we will become people that love as God loved, we will love the world as well and be able to impact the world, be able to make a difference with the world. We're not making any a difference with the world and we're not impacting the world because we're struggling in the area of loving the world. We've got the mentality that we are better than the world or that we are an exception to the rule. We have taken the grace and the mercy that was given to us and have taken it beyond the place of where it needs to be. We have forgotten about the fact that such were some of you. We've forgotten that. We've forgotten that. So John chapter 3 and verse 13 again, Jesus says, And no man has ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven. Notice the word it says came down. Uh, which means that he had to step out of the place of where he was to come to redeem humanity, to come to earth, to the world, to redeem. He had to come down. You ought to tell the Lord this morning, thank you for coming down. You ought to tell the Lord this morning, thank you for coming down. I'm trying to tell you, you ought to tell the Lord, thank you for coming down because he sure didn't have to come up to get you. Oh, God, he sure didn't. He sure did not have to step up to get you. He had to come down to get you. You ought to tell the Lord this morning. Thank you for coming down, oh boy. It says, but he that came down from heaven, even the son of man, which is in heaven. Verse 14 says, John 3 and 14, it says, and as Moses lifted up 
the serpent in the wilderness. Even so must the son of man be lifted up. Now it uses the analogy of the situation that Moses went through where he took the serpent and the serpent, you know, and the rod became the serpent. And so he's using the analogy and he's saying that the same way he had to lift that up to display the power of God, then that is the same way that the son of man has to be lifted up in the earth or what we would call the world. He has to be lifted up in that context. Okay. Verse 15 says that that whosoever believeth in him, notice now, it says believeth in him, believeth in him. It uses the word in because the word in represents internally. It represents a, a personal, a intimacy. Whosoever believeth in him, whosoever causes themselves to become a part of him, hooks into him, whosoever believeth in him, him should not perish but have eternal life it says this is that life that not perishing means that they're not going to be uh, unuseful they're not going to be unworthy there's always going to be some value to someone that believes in him because the believing in him gives life for in him there is life and outside of him there is no life so there's always is going to be some life uh, to whomsoever believeth in him. The One of the greatest fights, it won't be always the fight, but one of the greatest fights that you will have, we will have, is going to be the fact of believing in him. If the enemy can get him to look like a liar, look like someone that did not come through with what it was that you requested, that we put in a request for, then we're not going to believe in him. So so you say, Lord, I want you to let them live, although we understand that we cannot live forever, but there is a request to say, Lord, please don't let them die. Let them live, God. Lord, I thank you for healing them. And they don't live on this side where then he wants to stop us from believing in him. See, he didn't even do what you asked him to do. What is it? Why, why you want to believe in him? See what I'm saying? Look what he did. See, he still let them pass on. So why is it that you want to believe? in him. He didn't even pay any attention to what it was that you had to say. So what you asked him for, ain't no need of you believing in him. And you even used scripture when you were talking to him. You prayed and you said, you know, the Bible says that you can have whatsoever you ask. Uh, the Bible says that if you believe that the Lord will perform the things to which you believe. But he didn't perform it for you. So why is it that you want to believe in him? You shouldn't believe in him. You wanted him to put the relationship back together. But look, it fell apart. Y'all ain't even together. So why do you want to believe in him? So it's always going to be an attack against the belief. It's always going to be a fight against the belief. So he says, listen, I do not just want you to believe on me. Although there is a scripture that talks about believing on the Lord, which means that you put the responsibility on the Lord. When you believe on him concerning something that means that's what he carries the responsibility to perform. How your life is mapped out is the responsibility of the Lord to set because he establishes how we go about life. He sets the Bible says that he sets the ending from the beginning. So but now when you believe in him then that means that you believe in the ability or you hook your into the secret place. There's two different things. There is a belief in him and then there is a belief on him, although we should have the both of them, but you got to understand the context of the both of them. For God so loved the world is what I want to encourage you about this morning. Listen, now, there is not no one on this earth that God does not love. God so loved the world. Please understand that. God so loved the world. I'm glad he does love the world, okay? Because I came from the world and sometimes get to tripping and be like the world if you don't watch it. But God so loved the world, it says. And so then there is a belief in him. God, I need uh, to believe in you. I got to. I got to believe in you because the belief in you is what is give, gives me the ability to change. The belief in you what hooks me to your character. The belief in you is what hooks me to your integrity. But God, I also got to believe on 
on you. When I believe on you, that means you have the superman ability to carry out assignments that I cannot uh, carry out for myself. I got to believe on you. The fact of believing on you is me believing in the fact uh, that you died for me. I believe on you, uh, that you went to the cross, God, but I believe in you that you're going to change my character. I believe in you that you're going to make me a better person. I, I believe in you, God, uh, uh, that you have the ability, Lord, to help me emotionally. Ah, God, I believe in you uh, uh, that you have the ability to help me uh, uh, to, be, to do pay my bills like I'm supposed to pay my bills. See, that is a belief in him. Uh, and then there is a belief on him. Uh, and the Bible also is just another text for you. It says, put ye on uh, of the Lord Jesus Christ. When the Bible talks about the putting on of something, that means that it is the covering of something. Uh, that means that it protects something. And so it gives a shield uh, or a hedge of protection over you as you navigate through certain things. So there is two beliefs. There is a belief in and a belief on right here in John chapter 3. He says this right here, that whosoever believeth in him uh, should not perish. Uh, all right, now, so listen, I need, I'm going to go in here for a second, y'all, about this believing in. It says, believing in him, that is the internal thing. Uh, that, uh, that, is the, that is the things that changes about us uh, internally. Huh? That is the things that causes my mouth not to talk like it used to talk. God help me this morning. Those are the things that causes me uh, to walk differently than I used to walk. Those are the things that causes me uh, to pay bills where I used to would just do whatever I wanted to, not integral as I needed to be. See, those are the belief in things. He says, uh, whosoever believeth in him uh, shall not perish. Why? Because he's going to uh, change of it internally. That's where your change takes place. That's where my change takes place. But when I believe on him, that has nothing to do with me. It has everything to do with what he can do. That is his power manifested. So he says, whosoever believeth in him should not perish, uh, but have eternal life. It's the change that happens inside of me that gives me eternal life. God help me. It's well, uh, y'all, y'all, you all better hear me this morning. It's what changes inside of me uh, that God help me that gives me the ability to have eternal life. God, uh, I'm gonna say it again. It's what changes in me that gives me the ability to have eternal life, God. If there's been no change in me, then my eternal life is questioned. God help me, please. My eternal life is under questioning. If there has been no change in me, God help me. I got to believe in him, which means I connect into him. He and I become one. He abides in me and I abide in him, which causes us to now become one unit. And when there is, he's in there, there is eternal life because there's no death. God help me. There is no death. God help this morning. There is no death in him. So now that what gives me the ability to have eternal life. But if you just believe on him, God help me please, then that just means that there is no change internally. Lord help me please. That's the reason why we and sit in services uh, on Sunday after Sunday and believe on him, uh, but do not believe in him, uh, because believing on him means uh, that I'm sitting under the covenant, or, or I'm sitting under the covering, I'm inside of the building, but I have not connected to what's going on uh, on the inside of the building. God so loved the world. <laughs> I'm trying to tell y'all this morning, for God so loved God help me. <laughs> so that is the reason why there can be no change, but when I believe in him, him. When I believe in him, then that gives me the opportunity to make the internal changes that needs to happen. Uh, God, help me, please. Uh, Lord, could you help me today? I need you both ways. Uh, I need to believe in you, and I need to believe on you. God, help me this morning. Uh, I got to say it again to help us, God. Uh, God, we need to believe in you, and we need to believe on you. Yes, God. Uh, we don't need to just be sitting in the building, but have not changed internally for God. 
God so loved the world. God help me please. Oh God help me please. We need to believe on you and we need to believe in you. Let me get to my text here. God help me this morning. Oh God verse 14 says no verse 16 I'm sorry. John 3 and 16 says for God so loved the world. Ah oh, Jesus Christ. For God so loved